Rockport, Friedman, Hayek, and Owen Land, I think it was. The five people who helped liberty the most. I'm sure Brian would have had Ron Paul if he were to write the book more recently. And his Ron Paul book was exquisite. The, the two of us reviewed each other's books in Liberty Magazine. And we didn't see each other's reviews, so we, you know, I couldn't say, well, if you give me a bad review, I'm going to give you a bad review. We each did it in the absence of knowing what the other guy wrote. And I wrote a very positive review, as he did. And also, my buddy uh, Joanne here uh, wrote a review of my book. It's on whorockwell.com. Go see that. It was a very good review. I paid her off. No. Not yet. <laughs> I'm still waiting. Okay, so the, the next issue that I broach in the book is personal liberties. And Ron Paul is against this NDAA. And again, this is not a, a, an Obama thing. This is both. The Republicans and the Demo Republicans, you know, they're in this thing, which, well, as far as I can see, I don't want to blame Obama when the, the, uh, the, the, the previous administration, the Bush people, did the same sort of thing with this drones and killing U.S. citizens without a trial, and uh, it's just grotesque. The founding fathers would have flipped over in their graves if they could see a thing like this. Ron Paul is the only one uh, who has any sense on this. I remember the debate in uh, South Carolina where Ron Paul tried to use the Golden Rule as a, an approximation of uh, libertarianism. Don't do to other people what you wouldn't want them to do to you. And he got booed. Can you imagine getting booed for, for the Golden Rule? And, and this is the Republicans. And you know, they're just a bunch of militarist warmongers. Or many of them are, too many. Ron Paul is, is wonderful on this um, uh, Gitmo, uh, Guantanamo, uh, it was supposed to be closed. Uh, Obama made a promise, and it's three and a half years later. He has his, he can do that all by himself. He doesn't need Congress to approve of that, and he hasn't done that. Of course, it was Republicans that opened it up in the first place, so they're both guilty. But the one I want to focus on under this rubric is drugs. Drug prohibition. Now, Ron Paul has been accused of being a racist against black people. And remember that ad that he had about this black guy who uh, had a white wife in Texas? And when Ron Paul was, I guess it was in the 50s or the 60s, and this black guy is going around and all these doctors and trying to say, hey, you know, my wife needs help. Can you help her? And they said, oh, a white wife. I'm not going to help you. And then Ron Paul came along. He was an obstetrician and gynecologist. And, and you know, he doesn't look at the color, he just says, yeah, I'll be in this black guy who's now much older, uh, maybe my age, I'm 71, something like that, whereas he's talking about 30, 40 years ago, and in the South, uh, racism was a lot more prevalent than it is now. So that's one indication, but that's sort of anecdotal. I mean, I'm, I'm all in favor of that, and I think Ron Paul successfully rebuts the criticism of racism just on that one end. But it, the drug war, uh, young black men are being killed like flies or being incarcerated for victimless crimes, as far as I can see. Now, look, you have to distinguish between favoring heroin, marijuana, cocaine, whatever, and legalizing it. Libertarians don't favor it. We don't oppose it either. We're neutral on it. It's the same as vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream. It's just irrelevant to invasion. But to put people in jail for a victimless crime of putting crap in their bodies? Now, why is it that we have criminality associated with drugs? Well, we have supply and demand analysis. Again, comes to our rescue. Here's the ordinary supply and demand for drugs, quantity of drugs, price of drugs. And what does the prohibition of drugs do? The prohibition of drugs shifts the supply curve way up to the left, this way. And the price of drugs, instead of, you know, these drugs, they're like a weed. They're not like asparagus, which costs a lot of money, and you have to have patting them and caring and feeding of asparagus. These drugs are like a weed. Marijuana, you just sort of put the plant in there, and you have to go back like Jack of the Beanstalk, because it starts going and exaggerating a little bit. But these are very cheap drugs. The estimate is for marijuana, and, and the medical marijuana is really despicable. People
people with cancer who were dying on their last days and they wouldn't let them have marijuana. I mean, it's really despicable. Okay, so what happens is the supply curve shifts way to the left. Demand curve doesn't shift as much. Prices skyrocket. You're a, it's, you want to get a job. You're a kid in the inner city uh, uh, community and uh, you, you don't want to work for chunk change and you want to work for a, a lot of money. You go on a drug. That's, that's why the price is so high, and that's why there's so much crime. You, people think that, that, that um, the, re the reason for the crime is because uh, of the drugs itself, but no. By the way, the reason we have the drug war is the Harrison Narcotics Act of 1917. That's when it came in, and before then, drugs were very, uh, uh, Coca-Cola was made from cocaine. Uh, there was cocaine in the Coca-Cola. There was no crime associated with this. It's the same with alcohol. Before alcohol prohibition, there was no crime associated with alcohol. After alcohol prohibition was over, the, nowadays you get booze or wine, or there's no crime involved with it. During prohibition, for some reason, it was young Italian men shooting each other. Now it's young black men. I'm not sure why the, the racial uh, ethnic is different, but it's usually young men, and they're fighting over vast profits. Why will, will we never win the drug war? There's a... Um, Charlie, you might know more about this than I, but there's an ancient uh, Greek uh, myth or something where the gods are fighting, and one of the gods, his mother is the earth, Gaia, and every time the other go go uh, guard knocks him down in the earth, he comes up stronger, and uh, the other guy isn't going to win. Every time you uh, get punched and you get on the canvas and you come up stronger, well, eventually you're going to win. It's the same with the drug war. Every time they interdict a shipment, that means that the supply is even less, right? I mean, suppose they capture a hundred tons of marijuana. That means that the supply shifts to the left, and what happens to the price goes higher. What happens to the profits in it goes higher. So every time they win a battle, they lose the war. So of course they're never going to win the drug war. Because the drug war feeds on itself in this way. And you have a disproportionate number of young black men in jail, shouldn't be in jail because they uh, non-violent crime or just having some cocaine or heroin or whatever or marijuana. Uh, and a uh, disproportionate number of them are killed. This is a horrible thing in the black community because there are a lot of women that can't marry people that they would otherwise marry because they're in jail or dead. It just uh, it creates, it creates AIDS. It, it, it uh, exacerbates AIDS because they do shared needles. And, and whereas if it was legal, you wouldn't share needles. No one shares a penicillin needle. No one shares an insulin needle. You know, if they did this with insulin, suppose they prohibited insulin and now diabetics couldn't get it except they had a kill for it. And the reason you have, another reason you have crime is because it costs so much for the, the recipient. So you have to either engage in prostitution or crime. It just is a big bloody mess. Is Obama trying to uh, legalize drugs? Ha. Is Romney trying to legalize drugs? Double ha. Only Ron Paul is trying to legalize drugs, and they're calling him a racist because he's against black people or something. And, and yet, black people are disproportionately suffering from this, and he's being called a racist. And this is just a grotesque violation of justice. Ron Paul uh, is magnificent in his uh, declaration of legalizing drugs. The third thing is foreign policy. 